Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Just a bit more of a casual video for ya. I recently got this. It's a bag full of, well, Game Boy Micros in various states of repair and working status. Looks like there's three of them in here, plus a battery and a charger and some random parts. I don't know what the condition of all of these is. Some of them may be working, maybe they're all junk, I don't know, but I figured, hey, this time let's just kind of go through them and see what kind of shape they're in, if they can get fixed up. Maybe all three of them are actually working, maybe none of them work, but eh, let's just hang out and see what we can do with this. All right. So we've got what looks like a complete one with faceplate, although the faceplate's a little cracked. We'll come back to this one. One of the screws on top appears to be not in all the way. Actually, it's missing a couple. We've got two faceplates in here, and these appear to be original ones. And this is a big deal because there are third-party replacement faceplates for the Game Boy Micro out there that you can buy. I've never found any that are really all that great a quality. The big issue that I've found is that the lens in the middle where you look through the screen is never as clear as like the original Nintendo ones were. Um, both of these appear to be in okay shape. This one's got a broken tab on this side where it hooks onto the console. That's actually not a big deal if it's on the button side because um, this end kind of hooks in and then the other side has a couple of latches that snap in and hold it down. If the latches are broken, obviously the faceplate's gonna fall off, but if you're missing one of the hooks, that's generally okay. Got a charger, and of course, it was a proprietary charger for the Game Boy Micro. Um, actually looks like this might be a generic replacement. Doesn't say Nintendo in it, on it anywhere, but that's okay. We've got another one that's missing the faceplate, and it has a whole bunch of screws <laughs> stuck to the magnet of the speaker on the front. It's a little dirty and the back is a little bent, which is actually fairly common with these. The housing is made out of metal and I'm pretty sure this was the only handheld Nintendo ever made with a metal housing on the exterior. Screen itself is dirty but appears to be undamaged, so that's nice. Buttons feel okay, so they've got their membranes. This one could be a good candidate for uh, for restoring, assuming it works. I've got another one in here, and oh, I'm immediately seeing a problem with this one. Not sure if you can tell, but the screen is cracked. Uh, you can see where the liquid crystals have kind of started to leak in the corners, and I can see a big spider web running down the middle. In decent shape otherwise, I mean, just some scratches, but not quite as dented or whatever as the other one. It's also got its battery cover, nice to see. All right, one more screw left in the bag and a battery. This is an original battery. At least it's it's got the Nintendo logo on it, whether it's a legit Nintendo one or just a really good fake, I don't know. But these are nice to have. You can actually still buy replacement Game Boy Micro batteries, um, at least third-party ones on eBay. I don't know if any of them are any good or not, but it's, again, nice to see that you can at least still get some parts for this console because it really wasn't all that popular when it was new. I'm immediately starting to see why this one's got a cracked screen. If you kind of look at it, eh, it's all dented. You see how that? It's like smashed in. So this thing took a big hard hit right, uh, you know, on that spot. Which, honestly, I'm not surprised to see Game Boy Micros get kind of beat up. I've got a couple of them already and neither of those are perfect either. I think a lot of that is just due to the pocketability of this console. It's so small, it really is conducive to just throwing in like your front pocket or whatever and taking with you places. So because of that, it is more likely to get damaged as opposed to another handheld where maybe you've got a case for it and you throw it in a bag or a backpack or something like that. So, you know, you're naturally going to be a little bit more careful with one of those. With this thing, just because of its, you know, convenience for carrying around and the fact that it's a metal housing, so it's, you know, gonna show dents and stuff on like plastic, which usually kind of shrugs them off. Um, I'm not surprised to see that. That's a real bummer. Hopefully there are still some usable parts in here, 
but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get that dent out. And uh, definitely explains why the screen got cracked. So maybe let's uh, let's take a look at this one that's missing the faceplate. It's a little dirty, of course, but this is the one that I think only had just yeah a little bit of a, a dent in the back, like the place where the cartridge goes is a little bent upwards. I think I need to unscrew the battery cover a little more. And it appears we are missing a few screws from inside here. We can get those put back in. The uh, water indicator has not been tripped. It'd be solid pink if that was the case. So that's a good sign. Let's take the battery. You know, I've always found the way Nintendo did the connectors for this battery to be annoying. There we go. All right, got that plugged in. No lights either, so I would expect the light on the front to be on. This one's dead. That sucks, but it does have a screen that doesn't appear to be damaged and the casing is in better shape. So maybe we do a little switcheroo between these two. If the motherboard in this one still works, put it in here. Well, let's see. All right, this one feels a little heavier. Might already have a battery in it. Not doing anything. This one's in not too bad of condition. It's scraped up, but... That's perhaps not surprising. There is a battery in here. And it is an original one. Try this other one. See what we get? These two look different. Either one of these is fake or Nintendo changed vendors maybe at some point. Because the labels are slightly different between the two and then also you'll notice this one's completely wrapped and this one isn't. What do we get? Oh, this one works! So this is the one with the cracked faceplate and some loose screws apparently, since screws are falling out. But it works! That's great. And that means that this battery works too. And more screws are falling out. <laughs> so at least we know we have one good working motherboard and screen. We have one good working battery. Let's try the one, the good battery with the one with the broken screen and see if at least it wakes up. Okay, this one powers on. Obviously the screen is very broken. It does produce sound. You can hear it when I'm pressing the volume up down buttons on the side. Although I didn't hear a startup chime. There we go. Maybe the volume was just all the way down. So this one seems like it wants to work, but the screen is broken. So this is definitely going to be one of those deals where we're going to take this chassis because the casing is in better shape. It's not all dented across the top. And it's got a good screen, but it appears to have a bad motherboard. And we're going to put the motherboard from this one in here. Let's test this one more time just to make sure I'm not going crazy. So that's that same battery that we know works. And it's dead. Even if the screen was like disconnected inside, I should still hear the chime and the little blip blip of pressing the volume up. Okay, so probably bad motherboard in this one. Swap it out for that other one. Let's go. Well, it looks like we're playing a game of someone's been in here. Look at this. This is bent. See how bent that is? I mean, we know someone's been in here because it's, you know, missing screws and stuff, but it also looks like this screw on the top, which is normally a tri-wing. Uh, that guy's all sorts of chewed up. Make sure you use proper tools. I hope I can get this one out. Oh no. Ah. All right, the next size up. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I can't get this screw out. Uh, what else can I use on that? A teeny flathead maybe? I can't tell if it's turning or if it's... No, it's just chewing it out more. 
Why do I always take on other people's projects? Like, why? You know why. You know the answer to that. Nope. I can't get it. The head on that thing is totally chowdered. Um, so yeah, this one on the end is pretty bad too. If I can't loosen it, I may just use the wrong tools when they were working on this last. Yep, okay. That one is, is toast too. So I've got two of these that I gotta drill out, top one and the side one. Um, kinda ruins the back panel, but I mean, trying to get a tap, you know, after I drill the head off, trying to like drill out the rest of the hole and get a tap in there is just going to be pretty much impossible due to the small size. So I'm just going to have to write the back panel off, which is a bummer, but uh, oh well. All right, so this is like the smallest drill bit that I've got. Can't say I've ever taken a drill to a Game Boy before, but you know, first time for everything, I suppose. The hope is to just drill the head off that screw without damaging the faceplate. Making a huge mess in the process. There we go, got it. Let me do the other end. Okay. It's actually been a while since I've taken a Game Boy Micro apart. Yeah, pretty sure this one needs to come out. So this one's missing all sorts of screws, right? Like that's the only screw really left in the back. What's nice is even though I've got some extra screws, it looks like the smashed one still has all of its screws. And you can see it's even got these top ones, the, the tri-wings. What's interesting is these are black. And the two that were left in the one with the dead motherboard had silver heads. So I'm wondering if maybe somebody put the wrong screws back into uh, into these places where they didn't belong. All right, let's get some of this metal, metal shavings out of the way before they become a problem. You know, I really should be wiping those up. Let me wipe those up. Okay, just a couple of Phillips screws left in here. That always was the weird thing about Nintendo is they'll use tri-wings on the outside of stuff, but then to make their own lives easier, I'm not sure that was the right screw for that spot. They'll do like Phillips screws on the inside. You have to kind of hinge all of the internals like up like this because it hooks into the bottom, this metal plate that uh, shields the game cartridge slot. I remember working on these, it's... When you're putting it back together, it's easiest to kind of actually put the faceplate back on facing up. But taking it apart kind of comes out this way. Oh, the display... Adhesive was still intact. That's kind of surprising. Usually the uh, little bit of adhesive around this display gasket goes bad by now and it would just fall out. And this one still had a little bit of stick. It seems kind of yucky on the inside. See all this dirt and junk? All I really want is just this LCD panel. Ooh! Oh no! What happened there? I think I know why this Game Boy doesn't work. Um, it must have seen some water. Because the back of the LCD is rusty. And then look at this. There's like rust and junk all around the components and stuff inside here this whole thing like got submerged almost i'm hoping the screen still works but you know what if this thing got wet it very well may not look at that the water indicator nothing wrong same thing with the water indicator on the back panel like are you for real do these stickers even work? I mean, <laughs> oh no. All right, let's um, let's pull the screen off this thing. And we'll just test it in the other Game Boy. Oh, even the ribbon cable connectors got some corrosion and stuff on it. 
Oh, this screen is toast. I'll try wiping down the pins on here and see, but I'm not hopeful at all. That's a bummer. First, I gotta wipe this thing down again. Like all this rust and just stuff that fell out of that thing. All right, I've got just a cotton swab with isopropyl alcohol on it. I've, I've had my hand at fixing flat flex cables before. I've had some success, but they've all been like really kind of wide pitch traces. Nothing nearly as tiny as this. All right, so that connector, this one looks kind of clean now. I'm just gonna wipe down the back of this so it can stop just dropping crap all over my table here. All right, so let's uh, start taking apart the broken one here with the smashed screen. Thankfully, like I said, it's got all of its screws and it doesn't look like any of these have really been taken out or, or tampered with. I'm not seeing any of the telltale signs of someone being clumsy with a screwdriver or anything like that. So let's find the, uh, the small tri-wing bit for my driver here and start getting this thing separated. Back panel on this one's just like a little bent in here, but this one was actually in really good shape. Definitely gonna reuse that part. All right, broken screen. Yeah, definitely no, uh, no signs of shenanigans inside here, thankfully. One broken screen, one very broken screen, but see how much cleaner that is on the back? Hmm. I almost wonder if the other screen works, what are my chances of being able to transfer this metal back panel? These buttons always fall out from the front. The select start, they always fall out. What do we get? Holy crap, the screen works. I was not expecting that. I figured this screen would have been a goner. Okay, well, um, let's try swapping the metal back panels between these two so this one can be less ugly. Here's the trick for this little cable, by the way. It's got a flip up bail, but it flips up from the back like that. You just flip that little tab up and then the cable comes out. Kind of the opposite of how this one works but very, very similar. Okay, so we're gonna start this process on the broken screen with the clean back, because if I screw this one up, like break the screen in the process, it's already broken, who cares? Unfortunately, this gap is too narrow to get my spudger into, so I'm gonna have to use like a small flathead screwdriver, which I'm never the biggest fan of, because there's always risk of bending something or it slipping and, you know, poking something that it shouldn't but it's the only thing that I've got that isn't like a craft knife that can get in here and craft knives to do this kind of work are even trickier. All right, so I think, yep, we've gotten this one loose. So this is the clean one. Yeah, it got a little, a little bent up. I don't think there's much I can do to prevent that. Oh, we're almost there with this one. There we go. And the inside is perfectly clean. So the water damage and rust and junk is really just on the outside of this metal panel. That's funny. Yeah, the inside of the screen is like perfectly clean. Go figure. And that just clips on. Cool. I'll wipe down the front just to get rid of any fingerprints and stuff, and then we'll uh, put the whole unit back together and see what we get.
All right, and let's pick a face plate. I think I'm gonna go with this one. This thing isn't cosmetically perfect, so we'll go with the uh, cosmetically imperfect face plate here. And that just latches on from the side. That's not going anywhere. Now we just need a battery. And a battery cover. These have always been finicky on this console. I don't know why Nintendo made them so finicky. There. Sweet! Volume buttons work. I mean, it's not perfect, right? It's absolutely not perfect, but hey, you know, a little bit of plastic polish or something to maybe get some of the light scratches out of this front panel. There's not a whole lot I can do about the, um, the I think this is an aluminum casing, not a whole lot I can do about the powder coating or the anodization, I think, is what this one is. Um, but you know what? Saved it from the trash, so I'm all, uh, I'm good with that. So here's the other console that we determined works, but see it's got this crack in the faceplate and that kind of bothers me. There was a special tool that you could use to push both of the little pins or pegs or whatever through these holes. Of course I don't have one, but if you're really careful with something like a spudger, you can get in there and kind of release the hooks and get the, uh, the faceplate to come loose. There we go. And that's a real bummer because this one's got both of the hooks on the ends, but it's just cracked up top. We'll throw the other one on there. Now this one is missing some screws, it seems. So I'll root through this pile and see if we've got anything that'll uh, go in the appropriate locations. I don't have all of the exterior ones. I don't think there's enough of those. I'm missing this one, this little tri-wing. Maybe there's one in there, I don't know. We'll find out. Actually, it appears like I might have the missing screws. Looking better already. You know what would help? If I put the correct frickin' bit in the screwdriver. Saying. Trying to do tri-wings with a Phillips. Isn't gonna work so well. Hey, there we go. So for the morbidly curious, here's a look at this motherboard out of the system that I grabbed the screen from, the one that had gotten wet. Look at just how nasty that all is, especially around this chip. These legs are just ruined. Lots of other components nearby, just tons of corrosion and just rust and stuff. I really don't think this board is salvageable. So we started with three Game Boys and ended up with only two, but both of these work, which I'm really happy about because the Game Boy Micro, you know, it didn't do very well back when it was new, but I still like it. I think it's a really nice handheld. Definitely not all that great for, let's say, long-term playability. It's cramped and the screen is small and all that. But it's just a really nice example of what Nintendo can produce if they're going for something other than just kind of mass market appeal. This was a very specific model for a specific, I guess, mindset for gamer. And I just really like it. So anyway, if you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThisDoesNotComp. And as always, thanks for watching.